All right, so what about patients in whom those two NRTIs, and I'm gonna abbreviate this INSTI, right. it's easier for me, um, they're not an option. What do you do then? Well, I can tell you, there are very few people where that's not an option. And, and it really is about people who, um, we, they're, you don't really want to give nucleosides for one reason or another. And, and it keeps getting easier. This newer drug, uh, tenofer elephenamide or TAF, um, we used to get into trouble with people had modest renal dysfunction because then we weren't as sure what to do and, and the nucleosides were kind of got us a little bit, you know, we could argue more about it. But now with this tenofer elephenamide, you can go down to a creatinine clearance of 30, so you can use it pretty much, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think the, the hardest group are people that have um, real renal dysfunction, right? That, mm -hmm. That's an issue. Um, uh, transmitted drug resistance that, that's multi-drug resistant, which is really uncommon. Um, and I don't know, I can't really think of too many other scenarios yeah. where you wouldn't... Um, it, it, the, what comes up sometimes is, is that despite the fact that most of the time the integrase inhibitors are really well tolerated, oh, yeah, okay, there sure. are some people who have sort of sort of neuropsychiatric, sure. psychostimulatory reaction to that. But you started them on the integrase yeah. inhibitor, but yeah. then you have to, then you back off. Then you have to back off, but you don't know that in advance. Correct. There's not someone, you can't pick those You cannot people. pick those people, but, right? but you know, but these are, they're, they're, they're still drugs. They're not placebos. They're, right, you know, sure. No, no, no I, effect, I, I so. completely agree with you. Right? So let me, let me run down a couple of other problematic cases. One of them came up before, and I was waiting for this, this moment. How do you approach patients with very high viral loads, 100,000? or low CD4 counts, less than 200. Uh, are they special? Are there specific drugs you like? They're not anymore. Um, there used to be specific drugs we tried to avoid in those people. The overwhelming majority, it was a non-issue. And all of those drugs that we tried to avoid are no longer generally considered first-line therapy. Okay. So unless you have some particular attraction to a, a certain drug, it rarely matters. But what there are some misconceptions out there. There's okay. still, I mean, you go to meetings and you, even some experienced HIV treaters, they believe that if you have a low CD4, you should get a protease inhibitor. And the evidence for that is zero. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean was, pretty much zero. It was an, I think it, it has to do with the fact that the first life-saving drugs in the mid-90s were protease inhibitors. Yeah, I think and you're so, right. they, you know, they remember that and the clinical outcomes were first demonstrated in that famous study that Frank Valella led, you know, the one where, where you see the use of protease inhibitor-based therapy go up and the deaths from AIDS go down, and you know, that figure is emblazoned, is actually tattooed on his forehead. Uh, <laughs> so, so you, you know, that figure went into everyone's minds, you gotta use a protease inhibitor for patients with AIDS, but in, it's not true, you know. Okay, you, you, so. how about this case? Uh, Antiretroviral therapy in HIV-infected women during pregnancy. Yeah, so that's a, that's a tough one, and, and, and Paul mentioned that right in the beginning, right. because we just have less information, and some of these new drugs, like dolutegravir, tenofovir elephenamide, there really are no data yeah. for them in pregnancy, and, and, or the data are very limited. So, so the, the treatment uh, array shrinks, um, but we have pretty good advice. So raltegravir, which is an integrase, is, is okay to use during pregnancy, and, and so we can, you can certainly pick a reasonably well tolerated, very effective therapy, but but it might not be the top of the that's shelf right. that Paul was picking off of earlier. You know, it's and interesting. That's a, that's a yeah. shame, actually. So for example, tenofovir alafenamide, uh, which is the safer version of tenofovir disoproxyl fumarate, Ooh. root salad. Uh, <laughs> Even he applauded you. <laughs> so, so there's really no experience with that drug in pregnancy at all. So, okay. so we unfortunately, you know, we, we t in our institution where we're treating pregnant women, we use the old-fashioned version of tenofovir plus raltegravir, whereas we would not choose that regimen for a newly diagnosed patient in any other context. Of course, there were people using AZT in those patients. I know, so I know, it's a sort of ironic. This is much when, better than where we were. No, it's when, a, clearly. It is, it is also just worth saying that most of the pregnant women who are newly diagnosed are extremely healthy. You know, okay. so you know, the exception are the ones who acquired HIV as babies and have now grown up to be so those, they, childbearing women. They are extremely challenge. challenging, and usually they have bad resistance, but that's so, so. Yeah. The, the, different story. It sounds yeah. like a balancing act to me. I mean, if you've got a woman who is infected, right, you would like to treat her for her benefit and for the benefit uh, of the fetus, because sure. you don't want the fetus yeah. to, cap, to get viremic. Well, On the other hand, you don't know about the drugs. But one of the things, to go back to the beginning, that, that does get done 
consistently is HIV testing in pregnancy, oh, yeah. even in, in Iowa and North yes. Dakota. I mean, it gets done. So, so as Paul mentioned, those tend to be, and probably healthier women are more likely, unhealthy HIV infected women are probably less likely to get pregnant. Is Let me ask a very quick question. HIV positive, positive viral count in a pregnant woman giving birth, and if you treat around the time of delivery and you treat the infant, does the infant become viremic or not? Most, mostly not. I mean, the, really, the, the ones that are, are where you see occasions the infection is where it's missed entirely. And, and w unfortunately, women can become HIV infected during pregnancy. And, and it previously was recommended one HIV test during pregnancy. Now it's actually recommended they should be tested twice right. um, if, as if they come in early because you can, you're actually at greater risk of infection during pregnancy because of changes in the cervix and that sort of thing. So, so that has occasionally happened where a woman was tested, was negative, gets infected during pregnancy, very high viremia, obviously, high risk to the infant, and, and that's the scenario where you see a transmission. And yeah. there are still rare, rare cases that we all see them of women who present in labor, right. who had no prenatal care, okay. and are found out to have a rapid HIV test when they come in in labor. Right. And they'll get antiretrovirals, and the baby will get antiretrovirals, and we'll be able to reduce the risk, but it's not going to be zero. Do you like test every woman, woman in labor? Every woman in labor, do you test for HIV? If she hadn't been previously yes. tested during her pregnancy, absolutely. Okay, that, that's just routine. Absolutely. I just wanted to put that on the right. table. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Right.